In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, in the name of the one God, Amen. Al-Ilah al-Wahid, Amen. Uh, dear friends, uh, we will start the time of Advent, which is a preparation for Christmas. His Holiness uh, Pope Benedict XVI has just published the third part of his book, Jesus of Nazareth, where um, His Holiness says that uh, it is not sure the date of the nativity, of the birth of Christ. Uh, we are not sure of the day. So, how about the 25th of December? The 25th of December is the celebration of the Nativity of Christ. It is not a pagan feast, as uh, some denominations are keen on saying. On the contrary, it is exactly the contrary. The Church has erased the pagan feast as soon as it was possible for the Church to raise her head after 330, and the Church has replaced the nativity, the birth of the sun, S-U-N, and the divinized emperor, since Aurelian, replacing this double feast by the nativity, the birth of Jesus, our sun, S-U-N, the sun, the word of God, S-O-N. Now, so, where it is a lack of honesty, and it's a half of a quarter of the truth to say that the 25th of December in the church is a pagan feast. That they used to be a pagan feast in pagan Rome, but since the 4th century, we, uh, we see that the Church of Rome who struggled against paganism, paganism which had killed at least the, third, the first 30 bishops of Rome, the first uh, 30 popes, uh, well, the Church replaced, erased the pagan feast and erased it. So, the Pope is right in saying that we do not know the exact day of the birth of the Lord. In the, according to the flesh, I mean, according to human nature. But, we do know approximately, or approximately, sorry, the year. It is more or less the year 747 of the foundation of Rome, ab urbe condita, or urbe condita. What His Holiness points out to in his book is that there was a slight error, a slight mistake by the monk Dionysius the, the Little, a title which this, uh, which this monk took out of humility. Uh, by the way, this monk comes from Dalmatia, others say that he was Armenian. Anyway, that was really a genius. Upon request of Pope John I, to the best of my knowledge, well, this monk was asked to place the birth of Jesus at the center of history. So you have, at least for us Christians, before Christ, after Christ. And so, if we calculate, what was his error? The error of Dionysius the Little was that he calculated the death of Herod the Great to be in the spring of the year 750 from the foundation of Rome. And it turned out to be, this year 750 turned out to be the year 4, 
before Christ, the year before, before Christ, although Christ was already born, although Christ was at least two years old when, uh, when Herod the Great died. So we are now in the year 2012 AD, Anno Domini, according to the, uh, what we would call, to the calendar, to the nativity calendar, but we should be now in the year 2018, 2018 after Christ. Let me also add that in some countries, Christians, unfortunately, superficial, shallow, superficial Christians, or even atheists, take a pretext, namely, to respect the others. Out of respect for the others, namely the non-Christians, we shall erase everything that has anything to do with Christmas. So instead of Christmas greetings, it becomes season's greeting. Instead of Christmas holidays, it becomes winter holidays. Although this does not work in Latin America, for example, <laughs> where you have summer. Uh, in southern uh, Latin America, you have summer in December. Or spring. Anyway, not, not winter. Why is that? Well, some people that some people claim that some rabbis are very, very keen on taking away, on having, especially Americans, uh, take away anything that has to do with Christmas. Take it off, erase it. A certain rabbi Ezekiel, whose last name I don't remember. It's war against Christmas. Well, this we understand, but on the other hand, if you don't want any Christian symbols for Christmas, you shouldn't ask for Jewish symbols of Hanukkah, which is the inauguration of the temple. How about other countries? Other countries, we are told that let us take everything that has to do with Christmas, the Nativity of Christ, out of respect for Muslims. Well, some people in Great Britain might, might say that. Well, this is anything but accurate because of all books, let's say, the Quran, in which Muslims believe, well, we believe in the, in the Bible, Old and New Testament, but talking about Muslims and Islam, well, the Quran mentions the mother of Isa, Maryam, not the mother of Muhammad. The Quran narrates with details the nativity, the birth of Isa, son of the Virgin Mary, and not the birth of Muhammad. So how can you respect Muslims by taking away something that they have in their own book, which is the Quran? Of course, for us Christians, we believe in the Bible, we believe in the New Testament, we, re we rely on the New Testament for, for details about Christ, his double nature, his crucifixion, his passion, his crucifixion, his death. This is, this is no, there's no question about it. But what I was simply stressing on is that only ignorant Christians, between inverted commas, are capable of taking away Christmas out of respect for Muslims, because those very Christians do not know that Muslims venerate Isa and his mother, the Virgin Mary, and again, 
that the Quran speaks, mentions the name of Maryam. It is the only, the only woman, the only lady, uh, the only daughter of Eve, as they say in Arabic, mentioned by name in the whole Quran. Not the mother of Muhammad. And the birth of Isa, and not the birth of Muhammad. Of course, no misunderstanding, please. There are details in the Quran which do not agree with what the New Testament tells about Christ, especially about Christ as a child. But this is another problem altogether. Thank you for your attention.